results are in. Here we are. 207 baseline. And after these couple drills. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Last one. We made it to. Right, boys and girls. Today, we have a very, very special topic because we have a special guest in the video. And that's this dude over here. His name is Steve Furlonger Hi, from guys. London, England. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you like la 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 la. So he's an expert in ground reaction forces and also biomechanics. And he's been working with my coach, Lee Cox, for a long time. So when Lee trusts this guy, I trust this guy, right? <laughs> he had a couple of ideas because he was looking at my uh, ground reaction force data and I mean, tell me yourself, what did you find? Okay, so Martin pushes out of the ground incredibly fast and being a, uh, incredibly hard, should I say, being a long driver and the, the, the speeds that he's creating. So we're gonna look at vertical force today. We think that we can definitely get the amount that he pushes away from the ground. We're gonna ramp that up and that's gonna help him produce a little different force on the handle, which is gonna help him create a bit more speed. I mean, you can say it straight away, my verticals suck. Are they a little for, bit lower than I, I mean, some of the for, other For guys. a long driver, I mean, my, my ground reaction forces in the vertical have been like around 200, peaking at 240, more like at 180 to 200%. And I mean, comparing to guys like Justin James, who's pushing like 300% plus, Joe Miller like 270 yeah. plus, it's, it's not that much. Yeah. I'm moving more in this direction, like back, yeah. which is the AP force, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is that direction, like yeah. forward and backwards. Yeah, yeah you open up. And that as well, is moving my entire body, we felt like a little bit backwards, moving the strike location more forward, yeah, absolutely. right? Which is resulting in toe hits, and that's definitely my miss it location. So we try to work on that, and well, but first, before we do anything about this, let's do a little baseline. Yeah, okay? capture. Yeah. Baseline capture, okay, let's see where we're at. Good to go? Yes. All right. 222 on that one, little miss it. High in the face, high toe. So that's the usual location, right? That's the usual miss hit location, high toe. So let's see the data. Just telling by the video, I would be quite happy with my footwork there. Yep. So that, that's, that's a footwork I wanna see. Like right foot snapping, you see that like whoosh, yep. snapping in? Yep. Left foot is going backwards, yep. like whoosh, that way. Yep. So I would like that based on what I see on video, but it's only telling half of the story, right? Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so please explanation of that. So vertical peak right there at 207%. That's already way more than I usually do. So usually it's 180 to 200. But I mean, Steve told me before that he feels like we can increase the vertical and I don't get as much from the AP as I would get from a vertical, yeah. right? And also would also help my accuracy. So I was already hitting a couple shots with that in mind and that probably already increased it a little bit. But still, 207% for a long driver, yeah. it's not that much, is it? Not much, we can definitely go up than that. So that when we say 200%, that's two times his body weight that he's creating in the force away from the ground. So. 240 pounds. How do those base plates even hold? <laughs> Working on breaking not only driver heads, but also force plates. Let's see if we can make that work. I don't think so, but how would you feel like, how could I increase my vertical now? We've got a couple of exercises we can try. Let's give it a go. All right. So if we're going to increase vertical force, that's ultimately to create more torque or twist about your body center. Okay. Yeah. So think of yourself like a windmill. If yeah. we can get you doing more of this kind of creating this yeah. torque about your center, yeah. So like a windmill turning like yeah. that, that vertical force is going to be a component of that. It's going to it's help gonna spin you spin it more. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do here. Is we get that up through that left side. We get that left hip as high as we can. We get that left shoulder going up as high as we can behind the left ear. Yeah. That's going to then help us with that. Ultimately, get that we want to get that. Then force is going to go up through the left side. Yeah. Helps get it into the handle get it into the club head. Okay. So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do now. So the drills that we're gonna work on, we're gonna work on some throwing drills and some pulling drills and getting you really creating more torque to create that angle in your body. Did you hear that guys? So the ground reaction force is actually the root of all evil. I always thought about it like a gear, like my upper body being a gear yep. and my leg actually boom, like locking in on the side and like spinning it. Yep. It's pretty much the same principle, right? Absolutely. All right, whatever you like more, gears or windmills. We're just gonna say, Martin, just try and get that, get that shoulder up as high as we can behind you. Try and feel that that handle is going more up, high up this way. Yeah, that's it. Well, 
What I definitely see is, because I mean, I don't care too much about this data because I don't have any dots on the ball, so completely forget about the spin data. It's about the launch, which should be right, and also the ball speed, which should be right. So launching it higher should probably already be an indication of that I'm maybe moving more that way. Yeah, creating more angle of attack. So that's two things, actually three, three, three German, three, things at the same time. It's increasing speed, launch slash angle of attack, and efficiency, mm -hmm. yep. does it make sense? Yep. Because the efficiency for me is very, very important right now because I feel like for me, the most important bit right now is to be fast towards the end of a tournament and that takes a long time. For the World Championship, it's four days. At a normal event, it's like hitting in the morning and then hitting in the afternoon with a break in between. But the more efficient my swing is, the less I need to work to actually swing fast. With stuff like this, well, we might find something that makes it easier but faster at the same time. So guys and girls, what we, what we set up here is actually I got myself some weights. Steve got myself, <laughs> there we go. That's the way to go. And a kettlebell to actually attach this Golf Forever device to it. So now we're gonna go into the actual movement itself. All right. So we're really putting some resistance in there. We're really gonna get that windmill turning yep. as much as you can. One lead shoulder up. I'm gonna go like trail shoulder down. That. Yeah. Push away from the ground. Increase that force. Yes. Yep. Do, do you feel like I could potentially start more on my left leg to then push more up? Well, we know that there's going to be a pressure shift to that side, so you are going to go from there, up, back and around. Yeah. So there is this, definitely, so you can feel like it's doing that. Yes. So as much as you need to recruit from that left side, push away from the ground as hard as you can, yeah. let's get it going straight up. So what I feel like when I'm, this is an isolation of that part of the move, right? Yeah. So I feel like when I start left, I can push way harder. Yep. Right? Probably in the golf swing, there's so much more involved, but we're isolating it, right? Yep. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Uh, Wait! And one more. Okay, on, now. Let's push it. From the beginning. Mm. 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 Oh. Alright, as much as we can, low to high, we know that it is ultimately from here is maximum push up point, but I'm trying to just create more push up. Okay. I think if we create more push up anyway, it's probably going to peak a bit later. Yeah. Okay. I think you push up early because you don't push up enough. Probably. So. Yeah. So let's say. So, the ball's so, so be... you think I could load for longer, basically, right? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say the ball's going to be here outside mm -hmm. the right thigh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, we are now going to just send that ball up as much. Yeah. All right. Um, do that. When when you do this with your clients in London, did you make? good experiences with doing this before people swing to make it translate to the golf swing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you do it right before you hit Yeah. to create a feel. Yes. And then you swing. Yes. And try to replicate it. Yes, absolutely. All right. Straight up. Uh, yeah. Uh, good. Really feel that left uh, up and away. Good. Yes. And again, come on. Go. Uh, last one. Fast. Oh. All right, so we did the exercises, got a little bit of priming going, so I know like this is going to create more vertical force. So let's try to put Good. that in a golf swing. Oh. I'm not warmed up right now. I'm just hitting golf shots basically. But at the same time, I feel like my strike already, I mean I've only hit four shots, but my strike is a lot more consistent. It's okay. not as much on the toe. Because I, I mean, I want to see that on video, but as I'm not moving back as much, yep. or I actually feel like it's a more controlled motion. Yep. Like, because it's not as much moving backwards. Because I'm moving backwards so much anyways, it's always going to be there, and it's important that it's going to be there. Yep. Yes, but I have so much of it that I could potentially get rid of a bit in exchange for a bit of more vertical. So then from that perspective then, if I was to turn this, turn the, the windmill into yeah. a merry-go-round, so what Martin creates in a force to create a torque about his center of his body center here. So if he's getting a force and a torque about his body center here, it's gonna pull the toe of the club away from the golf ball, away yeah. this way. So as I'm moving to this yes, way, it's gonna pull it's it across the golf like, ball, pull the toe towards yeah. the center of the ball. And I am, Moving this way backwards, it's like yep. moving the strike location, the strike location towards the toe. Yeah. From the player feedback, the player knows whether you know where you're striking it. 
you're a super athlete to know that. So we've got to go in straight away and fix that strike point. We're only going to get ball speed if we get it out the center of the face, right? We're going to get it right out Absolutely. of Absolutely. Strike location is everything, basically, especially in competition. I mean, combat speed is your potential, yep. but your true potential is actually your ball speed. So then I always try to get back to something like a feel, a swing thought, something I can always get back to for yep. vertical. What would you recommend? Well, I'd go back to just thinking. The gear, go on. just go with the gear. If we start losing that strike horizontally on the face, we're gonna use that, that, that windmill gear, yeah. that cog turning this way to stop the face slide, the club face sliding across the golf ball to get the strike more centered. And then ultimately it's then getting the right amount of that to get it in the center of the face vertically. Yes. So would you recommend, because I have two cues for that. I have like spine tilt right, and I have like left shoulder going up. Yep. Which one would you feel like is more powerful? I would be left shoulder up. Left shoulder up. Yep. Yeah. Just try, try and think left shoulder almost going to right ear that way. Uh, Lothar Matthäus would say again what learned. <laughs> Boys and girls, a little bit of a different segment. While the data is processing, a little shootout. It's not always about speed. Sometimes it's also about fitness. And I want to pick the blue flag if you're okay. Blue flag. Okay, okay, I go with the blue flag. I go first. Blue flag. Oh, and come back. Oh, no. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Oh. <laughs> It's in the hole. <laughs> I can't get it out. It's in the hole. I mean, no question, was, guys. I reckon <laughs> that, that would have landed pretty close to the flag because that's gone vertical and it's hit the rock. So, uh, uh, maybe we need the independent judge to see. All right. Because I went for height. You know what? I have 15,000 independent <laughs> judges out there. So you comment down below if you feel like he won it. <laughs> we got results. The results are in. Here we are. 207 baseline. And after these couple drills, we made it to 229%. And this is two swings. So if I keep working on this yep. with all the drills and do it over and over again, I'm very confident that I can make it up to like 260, 280, 300. Definitely. So we've got 10% gain plus getting it closer to the center of the face. Yes. Double win. Let's go! Boom!